The third wife of John Payne described his final moments before his death in a horrific accident. Idaho Schaefer, a graduate degree holder musician at Virginia Seminary in Roanoke, and Mary George Washington Payne, a developer in Roanoke, gave birth to John Howard Payne on May 23, 1912, in Roanoke, Virginia. Payne went to Mrs. Bug Academy in Mrs. Bug, Pennsylvania, for elementary education before attending Roanoke College in Salem, Virginia. All lived in Fort Lewis, a historical castle that became a historic building for the empire before being burned down in the late 1940s. He went to Columbia University to study drama and the Juilliard School of Feeding to study voice. In the fall of 1930, he moved to Columbia University in New York City. He visited his relatives in Roanoke, Virginia, frequently. He tried his hand at a variety of odd jobs, including wrestling as Alexei Petrov and boxing as Tiger Jack Payne. Payne was discovered by a talent agent at Schubert Theater in 1934, and he was offered a job as a stockholder. Payne's, which is widely referenced in New York City-based radio programs on Broadway and accompanied most of the Schubert brothers' performances, featured in his evaluation overseas along with Ethel Waters, Eleanor Powell, and Beatrice Lilly, studied horticulture, and spent one night, himself. Fred Comer of Sam Goldwing spotted him. He has appeared in Rosemary Road Company items as well as student prints for $40 per week. Dodsworth's debut role was in The Gold Wind, in which he played Harry McKee, Walter Houston's titular character's son-in-law. He relocated from New York to Hollywood in 1936. In the 1936 independent picture Hats Offs, he featured Jimmy Maxwell as the male lead. On March 5, 1937, the film was released Fox 20th Century is a studio founded by 20th Century Fox. For the third time, Payne was responsible for issuing a formal warning to Fox for Norman Foster's 1937 American mystery picture, which he wrote and directed Edward Bromberg, Vet Furness, John Payne Victor Killian, Bill Bird, and Gavin Muir feature in the film. In the toast of 1937, John Payne was a love interest. He had a brief appearance in the Paramount comedy picture College Swing College, also known as Swing Teacher, Swing in the UK, directed by Raoul Walsh and starring George Burns and Gracie Allen, released in 1938. Bob Hope and Martha Ray In a 1938 American comedy film made by Busby Berkeley and based on the story of Richard McCauley, with a screenplay by Jerry Wald. Edward Everett Horton, Betty Grable, Jackie Coogan, Ben Blue, John Payne, Robert Cummings, and Jerry Colonna are among the supporting cast members. Payne obtained a deal with Warner Brothers and starred in the film Garden of the Month as Don Vincent. On October 1, 1938, Warner Brothers released the film Pat O'Brien, Margaret Lindsay, John Payne, Johnny Davis, and Melville Cooper star in the picture and Isabel. Payne is inspired by the Sheraton Hotel, which was built in 1939 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He was in Kid, Nightingale, and the Navy Wings in 1939. He returned to Broadway this time for Abe Lincoln and Illinois. Darrell F. Zanuck proposed to him a long-term deal during the recording. In Maryland 1940, he played a supporting role and had a good 1940s profile. Payne expressed dissatisfaction with his Warner Brothers roles and requested his release. Payne joined 20th Century Fox and starred in Star Dust 1940. Payne appeared in the Tin Tin Alley 1940 music over the weekend in Havana, 1941 and Sun Valley Serenade 1941, as well as the comedy The Great American Broadcast in 1940. Fox provided him with the chance to act in a play and recollect the events of 1941 and the shores of Tripoli in 1942. It was Payne's most commercially successful film. Payne went back to Fox in 1945, after serving in the armed forces after World War II and playing Harry Fox with the Dolly Sisters. It was another box office hit. Payne appeared in Sentimental Journey 1946 with Maureen O'Hara and was on the verge of starring in Payne's best-known part in 1946, probably his last Fox feature, featuring Fred Gailey in a classic holiday song on 34th Street 1947 with Natalie Wood, Maureen O'Hara, and Edmund Gwynn. Payne expressed his dissatisfaction with the job he had been offered. Payne later admitted that he had requested a weekly airing for eight months before getting it. He intended to create another one with O'Hara, 
who was fine in 1948, but he was fired from the studio in October 1947, despite a four-year contract that might have paid him $670,000. Fox viewed him as the second Tyrone Power, according to film historian Janine Basinger, and they didn't know how to employ him. Payne has been offered a contract to play Western games for Payne Thomas, a subsidiary of Paramount Studios' El Paso 1949 was his first film with the studio. He tried to improve his image after leaving Fox in Payne and began to take heavy characters in Hollywood noir films to develop ours in Universal Larceny 1948, where he performed a starring role, and in The Charm of Sax in 1948, where he played a supporting role. He took a circuitous route. United Artists, 1949 other roles included Captain China 1950 and The Adventure Picture, Tripoli 1950, which took place during the Barbary War, and Eagle and Hawk 1950, which took place in the West. He had a deal with Thomas Thomas to create three additional pictures, and he was in the West Passage in 1951. Another Western and adventure film, Caribbean Gold, was released in 1951. 1952 The Tale of the Burning Forest, a pirate film, was conquered in 1952. Payne Westerner stressed that the film in which he appeared was shot in color and that the picture's rights were returned to him after a few years, allowing him to make a fortune renting it on television. Payne starred in the war film Kansas City in 1952 however, he only appeared in 25% of the film. In 1952, he claimed to have received four fan emails, according to Fox Studio. I'm currently working on a couple of photographs, but they're not the sort that I want to work on. In Ian Fleming's James Bond novel Moonraker, he paid $1,000 per month for a ninth-month option. De went on to work on the pirate picture Raiders of the Seven Seas in 1953, as well as the film 99 River Street. A pirate series of Western Silver Cargo series was released in 1953. With Bennett's disclosure, the Santa Fe crossing into Laramie in 1955, and the road to Denver in 1955 Republic. And a Tennessee colleague in 1955 for fraud. He subsequently dropped the choice after learning that he wouldn't be able to keep all of the series' books. Vint held a 1956 night for co-opted artists and United Artists manager, who produced a ladder. From 1956, he came back to Pine Thomas on the island of Noir Hills. After that, he created the Scarlet Fake in 1956. Payne grew a new pine. Playing outstanding Paul Peterson, Thomasville Vale came out on top with a score of 43,000 in 1957. When there were other options, you played a gunman who opted not to fight. Vane starred as Vint Bonner in GM Nonstop a half-hour West series that aired on NBC every Monday night from September 23, 1957, to September 14, 1959. The Six Shooter, which aired on October 31, 1957, was based on a prior radio series starring James Stewart. In 1970, he also appeared in the Gunsmoke episode Ginger is the Law. Payne was a guest star on the Ford show hosted by Tennessee Ernie Ford, and he directed one of his final films before fleeing for their lives in 1968. In 1974, he began working with Alice Fay in the restoration of the excellent music news. Later in life, Payne benefited from the sale of real estate in Southern California on the night of March 1, 1961, when he was 49 years old when she played Peter Falk and Janet Lee in the Columbo episode of The Forgotten Woman. When he was struck by a car while crossing Madison Avenue in New York City, he received several life-threatening injuries. He was launched into the air, looked down at the car window and crashed, leaving him with significant facial bruising and injuries to both eyes. The driver said he didn't see any pain since it was raining. His left leg was fractured in five places, and his head was also broken. Pain was transported to Roosevelt Hospital, which is now known as Mount Sinai West, and had surgery. For the past five and a half months, he has been a crippled player. Payne served in the United States Army Air Corps as a pilot during World War II. Payne credited his full recovery to doctors who advised him that the patient's attitude was crucial and that he was always upbeat. In September 1944, he was honorably discharged. Julie and Payne were their children as Payne was wedded to an actor from 1937 to 1942, at the very least. In 1944, he married actress Gloria de Haven.
Before the divorce in 1950, they had two children, Kathleen Hope Payne and Thomas John Payne. At the time of the secret recording in Kansas City in 1952, Gloria Devon was still interested in Payne in March 1961 and called him once a week, according to journalist Earl Wilson, who wrote on June 27, 1961. Payne resided with him until his death, after marrying Sandy Crowell Curtis of Alexandria in 1953. Payne had an on-again, off-again relationship with actress Colleen Gray, which lasted after the recording. In film pictures and on television, he has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Best wishes, Payne, John. Payne died of a heart attack on December 6, 1989, in Malibu, California, at the age of 77. He was cremated and his ashes were spread in the Pacific Ocean.